Hey, no. I am with Michael Schmidt and no, everybody calls him Schnitzel. Whom everybody calls Schnitzel. It's funny, I don't actually really to your face, do I? Am I the only one? You're very nice about it in that case. What, what, what do you mean? Maybe from like, to my real name? Yeah. There are some people that know me only as Michael, but there are only very few. Okay. A lot of times people talk about me in my real name and everybody's like, who, who, who are you talking about? <laughs> and it's like, you know, the schnitzel guy. And I'm like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I just recently walked into an office uh, of a client in, in, in the US and I walk in and one of them, the two people in the room, one of them greets me and says, hey, hello. And the other one's like, yeah, I, like, who are you? I'm like, I'm Michael, whatever. And he's like, I, I know. And he's like, you schnitzel. <laughs> well, I shouldn't talk, right? I insist that you call me Jam. And That's I had your real name? <laughs> and I had the same with, with Eduardo Garcia the other week, who's Enzo. Sure. And I actually had to do a retake introducing him as Enzo. Like, he didn't want that. Oh, really? All. Yeah, and I apologize, Enzo. It's cool. But, so anyway, I don't... You can call me whatever you want. Right. Uh... Yeah, Sorry. I'm the last person who should criticize someone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that there of course there is schnitzel and i are here schnitzel ran for the second time correct for the drupal association board community position i guess it's a at large board member at large or something correct. so our community the drupal community we're lucky enough to have a nonprofit association that helps us run events and maintain our infrastructure. And the Drupal project itself has a board and there are several permanent members. And since three or four years ago now, there has been a there have been two members of the board uh, in one way or another elected, selected by the community. the community. And that process is changing and evolving. We've gotten to a point where there's a two-year term Correct. and the two terms overlapped. So so every year there's a new board member and an older board member and, and it moves like that. And so every spring, essentially every uh, uh, early, every year, I guess, so that I'm not discriminating against the Southern Hemisphere where I grew up, um, we have a community election. That community election has just happened. And first and foremost, congratulations, Shamla for winning. I'm really, really uh, looking forward to finding out more about you and, and, and congratulations. And I know that you've got a lot of great ideas. Um, I was personally extremely uh, impressed by India and the India Drupal community when I was at DrupalCon Mumbai. And um, if the Indian community is anything to go by, I think that we're in for having a great board member. So congratulations. I, however, um, was one of many people who find the instant runoff voting system confusing. Mm -hmm. And I had a bunch of questions and um, you, uh, a lot of people were asking you questions Correct. during the election because you were promoting yourself as a candidate and promoting the election itself. What kind of questions were people asking you that, that essentially, you know, were way off the mark? So one of the biggest question is that I got is that when people went to the voting and they saw the voting ballot, the biggest question is, do I have to vote for everybody? So we had 22 candidates running. Correct. And if you voted, you'll know that you hit a ballot which allowed you to put 22 candidates in an order, order. of 1 to 22. Correct. So do I have to vote for everybody? In Drupal, in our system, you don't have no. no. I've been doing a little bit of research because I felt a little bit uncomfortable with that I didn't understand the system so well. So in the way that we've implemented it, you don't have to vote for everyone, but your later votes up until a certain point um, can have an effect. Correct. And so we want to talk a little bit about that in a moment. Um, people also asked you if they could vote for you 22 times. Correct. That was another question. It's like, why can I... If because I have 22 vote, votes, yes. can I vote for you 22 Correct. times? Correct. Because in other voting systems, that is possible. 
Oh. So like in Switzerland, you can vote for a person twice, only twice. You can vote for one, once, never, or twice. Not not three times. Then the vote is in, is is incorrect. But you can put a person. So you can say like, "Why well, person is really important." Okay. Wow. So, that's that's really. It, but it's not an instant runoff system. It's no, system. no, it's, it's a majority system. So there's, but uh, that's your du- that's your direct mandate and your proportional vote or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Sorry, not the election. <laughs> this is not the election you're looking for. No, no, Drupal association. But, yes, I had people coming to me and say like, okay, so so I got twenty two votes. How do I give you all? Of right. So we want to run through the results here a little bit and talk a little bit about the um, the system itself. And we are going to link to more resources about instant runoff voting to, I don't know, first of all, I, I needed to feel comfortable with what we'd just done because I remember last year being confused by this and yes. I found myself confused again. And it will happen again next year. The whole system will happen again. And I think it's important that people, while they are voting, know what's going to happen with their actions while the voting happens. Because instant runoff is really cool. If you understand, but it's a little bit abstract, and it's it. You, uh, I had to make an intellectual effort to wrap my head around it. Yes, and if our plans come together, what we'd like to do, apart from linking to some resources and some other great videos that explain the system really nicely, um, and why it works well in 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 various situations, uh, we're hoping to get together in a few months and do a, a, a another set of resources for the community to be ready for the next time this happens. Correct. Yes. So, I can't vote for you 22 times. No. My vote, my later votes can have an effect. Now, I th- this was a really important piece for me yeah. because of the 22 candidates, I only cast six votes. Because m- my feeling was I know about these six candidates, uh, um, I've read about them, I've listened to them, I know them personally, what have you. These six people, I have a strong feeling, and I, to some degree, I have a first, second, third to six preference. And after about six people, um, I didn't feel that uh, I knew them well enough or that it made any difference who was seventh and twelfth and eighteenth. Correct. I think that's fine in our election because of how this works, which we're going to get to in a second. But one of the interesting principles of instant runoff, where the later votes are extremely important, yep. is, is something that we don't have in the Drupal community. If you have a, an, an electoral system like uh, many countries where there are two main parties uh, um, or, or, or a few main directions, so political right. philosophies represented, right. then your first vote can be for the very specific person that you really want to be elected, but you can cast later votes that are potentially relevant and you can keep those votes in your political philosophy. Correct. And we batted this ball around (laughs) a little bit and I was like, well, we don't have political parties, we don't, uh, 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 but we came up with a couple of scenarios where you might want to know how your later votes are relevant. If you would like... A woman to represent you, you should choose the specific person you want to vote for first, and then your subsequent top votes should be for women. If you want someone from a particular geography, correct, you should, um, whether that is, um, you know, not some places and all other places, like if you think it's important that someone is from a developing country rather than uh, uh, the United States or Europe, you should have a slate of those people on top uh, and so on. Yeah, there is age maybe, like if you want somebody that's really young, you first give the votes to all the people that are the younger ones <clears throat> or, yeah, basically. So it's really important to say, if my first vote does not get in, or gets kicked out, what we'll see now, who else would I prefer to be the next person that I would like to be in? And that goes through the whole list. So now, in, 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 in my completely amateurish way, um, we're going to go through how this works. Correct. And, and uh, like I said, I'm going to link to some resources. And we are going to run through the 22 rounds of voting that we had in our election and just talk about it because it was kind of interesting um, uh, how, how that worked. 
So in a first-past-the-post election system, whoever gets, uh, a um, depending on the system, a plurality of votes, like simply the person who gets the most votes at the end can just win. Some systems declare uh, you have to get to a majority of the votes, and then it's then there are different ways of getting <laughs> to that majority. And the instant runoff system is one of the majority systems. And so essentially what happens is you have uh, however many candidates, everybody casts their votes. Those are tallied against the candidate names. If a candidate at any point has more than half of the votes in play, Correct. okay, now that's a kind of an important <laughs> concept that I had to work my head around, they immediately win and the election is done. Correct. Now, if nobody has a majority in the first round, the person with the very fewest votes, they're thrown out. So it's an instant runoff because they're thrown out of the system and the field is reduced by one and everybody's votes are counted again, and the person who's been thrown out, their vote, their first vote, is annulled. And if I, so, if I vote for candidate A and A has the fewest, my second vote then comes into play and is transferred to another candidate. So over the rounds in our election, you see the number of votes for people growing while other people are eliminated. Yes, but so, only as long as the person that voted added more people. If you like you only voted for six people, and if all my the six first six disappeared, yes, then your vote is gone. Right, and so there's a there's a category in the results called exhausted votes, Correct. and the exhausted votes are not counted towards the total. So over time, we found that the total number of votes in play was shrinking because people like I did stopped making a choice at a certain point. Correct. So we go into round two. The votes are from the person who's been removed, right? And then, when those votes are removed, um, does anybody have more than 50%? Yes. No. The lowest, the lowest ranking candidate is removed. Vo then, let's say that they were my second choice and they were eliminated. Then, my third vote comes into play Correct. and gets moved to whomever and so on and so forth. Correct. So, depending on your skill or luck or popularity of your opinions, right? Um, the, the longer the thing goes on, the more relevant your later votes can become. Correct. So this moves on over time until the number of votes in play, until somebody gets half of those. Correct. And then stop and there's a winner. So you could have a winner in the first round, but in, in our case, we had 22 <laughs> rounds of voting. I'm going to post a flowchart about this and link to the Wikipedia article where I found it. Um, now we should go quickly through, um, I'll put a link to this, but there's, there's a post called 2016 Drupal Association at Large Election Winner Announced. So we're on the election, election results page for the 2016 elections. Why don't we talk this through? Correct. Schnitzel. Yes. So that's the round one. And as it says at the bottom, that's the count of the first choices. So everybody singles vote we looks at the first person that was on number the right. first place so this so round 1 is the tally of all first votes correct and then we see like in my case i had 333 people that put me on the first position right. and, and we had shamla had 390 90, matt had um 158 and enzo had 458 so enzo in a first-past-the-post plurality system, would have won at this point. Correct. Shamla would have been second, if that's relevant. You Correct. would have been third, and Matt Saunders would have Correct. been fourth. Yes. So, but Enso didn't get a majority of the 2,100-something votes that were there, so we go to round two. two. Correct. So what happens here is that at the bottom we see, and by the way, Drupal Association, awesome job. In yeah. doing that. Yeah, we like Thank the bar graphs. That's much better in understanding what exactly happened. So really good job. So it says here, count after eliminating toe labs. So toe labs is not something instant runoff voting. It's actually a username. Right, it's a username. Yes, and if we look, he had the least amount of votes. And it's so small that the chart doesn't even work. But he had um, 
I think one or two votes. And what happened, and it says transferring votes. So he gets eliminated, but his votes, they don't automatically go to exhausted. It depends on each of the votes. So we see... So we can see here that Danny Girl picked up one vote. So that means the person that voted first for Tolab voted as second place Danny Girl. Right. And that's, that's as much as we can see in round two. Yes. Now, Enzo is still in the lead, but he doesn't have a majority of the votes remaining. So we go to round three. Correct. Enzo, Enzo still has a majority. And down at the bottom, it says uh, Sherevar yes. was so, eliminated. And correct. now that bar is big enough so that we can see it. Yes. And Sherevar, three people voted for him. And I can see that one was moved to Shamla, one was moved to Rachid Gupta, and one was moved to... Tom Grady. So at that point, people who voted for Sherevar as the first vote had three different choices for their second Correct. Vote, and nothing was moved to exhausted yet. Correct. In round four, Ken Dillard was removed, and that means that six votes moved. And I can see that Enso and Shamla and Redacted, there are a couple of people whose names are not showing here, yeah. and, Ratchet. and Ratchet Gupta picked up those votes. Yes. And, but that's an interesting one, because the round five is the first one that Krilov, he uh -huh. had eight votes, and now we see the first time Exhausted votes. So we see down here that Exhausted has now received four votes. So four people who voted for Krilov as the first, first. had no second or any other yes. choices. Correct. So... So that's how they exhausted, actually. Right, So and you're going to see exhausted growing here. So we're going to yeah. skip through quicker now. Knibbles was moved in round six, mm -hmm. and a couple people picked up a couple votes, mm -hmm. and exhausted also picked up a couple votes. Um, redacted in the first position was eliminated in round seven, and 14 votes were moved, and a significant number of them was moved to exhausted. Six of those went to exhausted. So there are a lot of people only voting for one yeah. person. Yeah. Round eight, Tom Grandy was out, and I think I said Tom Grady before, um, and and his votes, 18 votes, went to the Drupal Viking... Uh, Basically everybody. Uh, like a whole bunch of people, yes. right? And to but Exhausted. One interesting one is, now it's the first time that a vote that before got moved to another person, that person got now again kicked out. Oh yeah, so Tom picked up a vote, before we don't, I don't remember from when. Let's go back. So here, Tom yeah. Grandy in round picked five. up one from Krilov in round five. Correct. And then now, in round he gets eight. Out. Tom is out. So that means that somebody whose first vote was Krilov and second vote was Tom Grandy. Now their third vote is coming into play for Correct. Shannon Vedis or for Danny Girl or for Voidberg or, or Schnitzel yeah. or John or. Three or maybe went, that person didn't put anything on right. third. And, so it's three, and three votes went to exhaustion. Correct. Yes. Round nine. So it is still anonymously. The vote does not allow you, the, that information that we have here does yeah. not allow you to say, oh, Jam voted first for that. You All don't right. know. Yeah, so it's still, it's still secret. So, so and at round nine, which is almost halfway through, Enzo is still in the lead. Shamlet is still second. And you're still third. Yes. Matt Saunders is still fourth, but his... Um, Fourth position is getting weaker. Yeah. Um, and Shannon Vettis has picked up quite a lot. So let's go Round through. 10, uh, uh, Gemma Devandera got eliminated and um, significant votes went to... Um, so now there's a pattern emerging. Enzo picked up a bunch. Shamla picked up a bunch. Exhausted picked up a lot. Danny Girl and Shannon Vettis picked up there. 11... 12, and the number of exhausted, so people stopped voting, a lot of people stopped voting, um, and there are more and more exhausted going through here yep. as the rounds go through. Round 13, the Drupal Viking went, and here you start to see um, you, Schnitzel, and Shamla picked up quite a lot of votes in round 13. Mm -hmm. Round 14... Shamla is starting to catch up to Enzo. Yes. And interesting, Enzo is still in the lead, but he still does not have more than 50% of all votes except the exhausted together. Right. So that means it continues to go Right. On. So at round 14, <coughs> Enzo has 471 votes. The second place, Shamla has 428, but there are more than... Um, 
1,000 and what have you votes. So yeah, there's still more than 2,000. Anso done. Anso has won every round, but not a majority of the votes in play. Correct. Round 15. This continues. Um, people are being eliminated. Anso adds a lot. You are starting to catch yeah. up. So your second, third, fourth votes with people must have been pretty strong. Correct. Yes. Um, because you're really, really catching up in the later rounds. Enzo still has a, a pretty solid lead in round 17. 500 votes to 441. So he's 59 ahead of Shamla, but there's still not a, a majority. So the votes go on. Round 18, Shamla picks up a ton. Of Rache, yes. Oh, because and Rache... now I think she overtakes Enzo. I'm not sure yet. Right. So so this is an interesting point. Um, and in theory... Um, well, I know that Shamla and Rachit are from India, and uh, if I were in the Indian community, I think it would be important to me to have an Indian Correct. representative. So people whose first or second vote went to Rachit, uh, they the vote after that went to Shamla, and so when he he t- uh, one hundred twenty votes were transferred, and Shamla picked up. 48 of those. So, you know, almost half, uh, 40, 40, 45% of his voters had her as the next choice. So she has a strong boost in round 18 and Mm -hmm. Exhausted has a very large boost as well. Shannon Vettis gets eliminated in round 19 and Enzo and Shamla basically are now head to head at 517 to 515. Yes. You're not doing badly, but... No. (laughs) But there's something happening. But now after Shannon... So Shamla potentially we could say here at round 20 that people for whom it was important to have a female representative, uh, Danny Girl uh, uh, had a lot of support, but she was eliminated in round 20. And so of her voters, Enzo picked up 12 mm-hmm. as a tr- second choice after Danny, but Shamla picked up 60 as a second choice after Danny Girl. So at that point... She has moved a good piece on, on 40, 50 votes ahead of Enzo in round 20, but neither of them has a majority. Exhausted has grown a lot. So we come to round 21, which is the penultimate round, and Matt Saunders um, is eliminated, and you actually got a ton of his yes, voters. Yes, that was interesting. So And you moved into second, second place. Yes. In the penultimate round, but Shamla has now six hundred and seven, correct, and um, which is still not quite a majority. And the la- very last round of voting is round twenty-two, where Enzo was actually eliminated because correct. you'd moved into second place. Yes, um, exhausted grew a lot. Oh, yes, and, and Shamla ended up with seven hundred fourteen. Um, so basically, at the last round, when there are only two players, by definition, whoever has more votes than has wins. the majority, right? Yes. So one interesting thing is that uh, that I was surprised is that at round 22, we see the biggest received to Exhausted. So a lot of people after Enzo did not choose anything after that. In fact, 342 people voted for Enzo and didn't vote for any second choice. Well, you don't know. It could be that that could be the seventh choice and after seven, they didn't have anything anymore. Oh, right, right, because... It's somewhere. But after Enzo... Nobody had. They, he did not put. In okay, that, that these people had nobody else after him. So. Oh, so he was a lot of people's last choice, right? No, and, or yeah, right, no. That like, well, it could be that like, let's say somebody put um, Shannon, then Enzo, and then Matthew, right? But Shannon got kicked out, so it moved to Enzo, and then Matthew gets kicked out, or oh, then an Enzo. And then, and then it stays then with Enzo. Enzo. And then it stays, and then Enzo gets kicked out. Then he wants to be moved to Matthews, and he cannot because he's already out. Right. So he gets moved to the next one. There is nobody. So that goes to exhausted. Exhaust. Yes. And my question will be: I guess if you would ask these three hundred forty-two people, if they only could vote between me and Shamla, that they probably would have an opinion. Okay. But so because they did not add me or Shamla on their voting sheets. Their votes got exhausted, and that's where instant runoff is really interesting. So, so, so the, it, so the, this system um, allows you to express a philosophy or a preference for a type of a situation or a candidate or what have you, which I think is good. Um, and it eliminates the field until there's a majority uh, in what's remaining, which is which is also good. 
our concern or suggestion or question that we want to address when we're, we're finding a political scientist to talk with. Um, one of the things that we are sort of concerned about is we wonder the people that have put into whose vote has gone into exhausted with 756 people who voted. Um, is it that their vote sort of didn't count? Yeah, it did not. Right. So we were thinking, and this is this is um, potentially because we're ignorant or innocent or both. Or people don't understand how it works. Right. So on the one hand, people need to understand how it works. Right. But on the other hand, in our election, in this specific case, we had in round one, in order of preference, Enzo, Shamla, Schnitzel, and Matt Saunders. And if we go all the way down to the end, those are actually the four last Correct. candidates when you get down to round 20. Um, now, we don't know if that pattern repeats itself in every instant runoff or not. It might not. But what we were thinking is that in our system with 22 candidates and the candidate calls and, and um, I found it really challenging to inform myself about 22 people. And mm -hmm. if I wanted to take all 22 of them seriously and research them and follow up and whatever, that would be more commitment than most of us yeah, can well, really okay. invest in Drupal community election in for better or worse, right? In anything. <laughs> like, I don't think people to take so much time in, 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 in the regular, in the red, regular political system. Right. So, so which is, also so important. talk about your suggestion. Yes. So my idea was to do two, two rounds of voting. The first one is you only have one vote, which is basically like the vote we have in the first round. These are all, that would be the result of exactly what would have happened if you asked anybody, give me your one single vote, because it's the first, it's what the people right. put on the first place. That's the first type of voting that happens. And after that, you take the top players. Like here, we say, okay, we have four top players. Maybe we five, whatever, how we define it. But a small number, a smaller of, number of final candidates. Correct. And these final candidates have time to do an actual debating. I was part now twice, both years. So in total, four hours of these calls. And to me, they are important, but they're really hard to follow. And at the end, if you have 22 people, everybody says the same. Yeah. There cannot be, there is not really a debate going. You cannot actually have a discussion between 22 people or like we try to split them up between like 11 people it's not possible mm. but it would be possible between four people right and then after that we do an instant runoff of the remaining people the instant runoff is important i want to say okay if and that's exactly the case if enzo is not getting in i want to have schnitzel and then maybe shampoo that is what an instant runoff works and people understand that if it's less amount of... Right, because players. in the current result, um, <clears throat> none of us could have known ahead of time that the final choice would come down to you and Shamla. Correct. Right? And maybe they didn't consciously form an opinion about that choice. Yes. And and presenting this in this order, um, it feels like after a while, the influence of our later choices is kind of unknown. Yes, but to it us. is important. And yeah. So... so what we're thinking, the core of our suggestion is we get to a place where there are a small and manageable number of popular candidates who then have a real mini campaign and really talk with each other and really talk with the, you, the voters, with the community. Yes. And then you can go back and vote in a sensible way with, with, with a very, very known quantity uh, of people that you, you had the chance to really actually learn about. Yes. There are two other mechanisms that I can think of that would let us get to the smaller group. Um, we could have the voting exactly like it is now, but stop it at four candidates and say, we stop at four candidates. Now we go to, you know, the campaign part two. Yep. Or another suggestion that we heard was, what if the self-nomination process means it is set up so that you have to get a hundred com uh, community endorsements to get on the ballot? Yep. You have to get a hundred Drupal.org members to endorse you on a form and um, 
then you're allowed to run. I mean, there are definitely, there could be other ways. Yeah. Um, you could, anyone who buys me a beer at DrupalCon is allowed to be on the ballot. No, oh, yeah. Or, or <laughs> yeah, I think that. no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but anyway, so, so, but, and one other thing that I could imagine is the board member, the at-large, is all about representation. So why shouldn't a person that wants to be on the board show that they can actually do their things somehow before? Mm. We have like community working groups in the board that already allows you to do, to be like a board member light. Mm. So we could say, and I know that that was discussed before on the board, that like um, we could say that only people that showed some interest in representing, in helping the community before, so you have to do one year first of service on the community working group, and then you can chop um, step up. That's interesting. That would be another way. And I, I, to be honest, for myself, it doesn't matter what we do. There's a lot of good ideas. I think we should try them out. I think one thing is that we have to reduce the amount of people they can vote right. for. Right. And, and, and I want to be very clear that um, everyone who stepped up to be a candidate, thank you for doing that and thank you for caring about the yes. community. And none of this conversation is about personalities or decisions or, or anything about individuals. But I found the system now two years in a row confusing and I believe I've engaged with it um, significantly. So, so I wanted to um, explain what just happened to myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and 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 we think that there's room for improvement and uh, I definitely want to follow up with this. Yeah. We're going to get a political scientist to explain us why this is actually a good idea and why maybe, we're maybe idiots. our ideas are really bad. <laughs> right? But no, you guys are idiots. Okay, yeah. sorry. Uh, but um and I think in the meantime if you also have questions that we haven't addressed or that you'd like us to ask um somebody who knows what they're talking about uh, please get in touch with us. Uh, I'm Horn Cologne on Twitter. He's Schnitzel on Twitter. Um, we are both pretty easy to find online. I think we should be, yeah. Yeah, and there is a comment form uh, on this podcast as well, so you could also just drop something in there. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you, and, and we're going to keep this conversation going. Yes, we will. Cool, man. Thank Sorry you, man. you didn't win. Um, congratulations, Shamla. Congratulations, congratulations everybody who, who put yourselves out there. Thank you. Bye-bye.